to another episode of the Nance Space. I am so excited to continue to be hosting this uh, podcast with my buddy and my co-host, Coach Mawson. And we started this in order to create a safe place and a space for men. We live in a society where all of the support and the mentoring and the empowerment are surrounding women. And all of the emphasis for the women is necessary based on where the social evolution has been. But that doesn't make it okay to not create that safe place and space for men. So understanding that need and having a compelling desire to honor that, here we are in the man space. And what we are going to focus today on asking the very important question, what kind of energy do we each embody? Because what we seek is seeking us. The energy we put out in the world is actually drawing us in, right? It's physics, it's spirituality, it's all wrapped into the reality of what life is. And so what energy are we embodying and what are we bringing forward? And how is that serving us or not serving us? And when we delve into this conversation, I want us to be honest and look at the importance of masculine and feminine energy because we all embody both. Kindness, compassion, empathy, and nurturing is feminine energy. Goal setting and success and ambition and thriving and winning is masculine energy. One without the other is empty, right? Nurturing without guiding for success is empty. Success without compassion is empty. So how do we bring all of that forward and yet keep our identity as a man or a woman and stay true to who we are, that is the magic of who we individually are. And to have this conversation, Marcin has brought in a excellent guest today. So Marcin, take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kess, for this beautiful introduction. Uh, very good friend of mine, uh, Jason Rosado. So who is Jason? Who is this uh, wonderful guy? Uh, so Jason is well known as, as and respected. He's a business coach, executive coach of 18 years. And as well, he is a certified energy healing master. So what does Jason do? Uh, Jason helps service business owners to double or triple their business revenue in six to 12 months by helping them to focus on the passion areas while improving organ organizational effectiveness, you know, employee development, executive time management, marketing, networking, and sales. So what else? Some of the interesting facts about Jason. Jason is very passionate about helping others to succeed in business or life where they have been stuck or plateaued as we have been playing volleyball, traveling, experiencing other cultures, hearing live music, and being a self-professed big nerd as a Star Trek fan, although he does not wear that Spock airs and when attending that con convention. So thank you, Jason, for being here today. Thank you for, you know, for your time. And I would love to, because we have spoken a couple of times, and I would love to hear executive <laughs> coaching and energy healing. How did that come up upon? <clears throat> oh my gosh. Uh, well, thanks so much. And that was really funny about the, yeah, I am a big Star Trek fan, but I don't wear the Spock ears. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, I, you know, I, I started in 2006. Uh, my last full-time corporate job, I was training manager at the company I was at, and that was in telecom. Uh, so I was in charge of training everybody from entry level through director level, um, operations, marketing, uh, sales, inside sales, a little bit outside sales. And, and I had a team of trainers. So in before that, going back in the corporate world, a lot of my roles were in leadership, training, employee development, team development, you know, running business units. And before that, I was in the restaurant industry and I was a partner in a, a small restaurant group. So I kind of had that small business taste, you know, before I got into the corporate world. And so when my last uh, full-time job ended, because we were sold to a larger competitor and I found myself out of work, I was job searching. I came across coaching. And as I was looked into it, so I was like, oh, what's this? It sounds interesting. I realized it was actually uh, an idea that I had for myself a few years earlier because I missed working for myself. You know, I wanted to control my own destiny. 
<clears throat> didn't necessarily want to work for somebody else. And I realized that through all these different positions, so many skills were transferable, you know, helping people to set goals, get clear on what they want, overcome their obstacles, you know, and make it happen. And I just realized I could probably work for myself and people would pay me to help them, you know, if they're out of work, get a job or move up into leadership in their company or even date better. Like my wife and I met through an online dating site in 2000. Uh, and, and we were pretty successful at that, luckily. <laughs> so we, we even thought about that, you know, and, and I was like, oh, yeah, that'd be really cool to work for myself and do these things. People would pay me and I don't know what I would call it. But, uh, you know, one day it was sort of a pipe dream. <clears throat> so then when I was job searching in 2006, I came across coaching and I was like, oh, wow, that's it. That's that thing that was in my mind. I, I could do that. It's a real thing. So I looked at different coach training schools, uh, picked Coach U because at the time I was also working part-time for Microsoft as a product sales trainer. I was doing a lot of traveling. And so I chose Coach U because they had a flexible enough schedule that it would fit with my other stuff that I was doing and went through that. It was fantastic. It was just amazing. Uh, and then I actually got certified as a life coach. And I thought I was going to do life and career mostly. And as I started networking and meeting people, I was coming across entrepreneurs who really needed help because they've got so much going on. You know, they're just working a ton. Um, they're stressed. They're trying to make their business go, trying to put their life together. They have kids and families and trying to balance everything. So I started working with them more on life coaching and realized that they really needed help also with the business end of things. So I started going down that path. And since I had this background in training and development, did that and it, it turned out to be a wonderful fit. So, you know, and then to, to answer your question about the energy healing. So then about um, 11 years ago, I heard about that and went to uh, one of my coaches who I respect a lot. And he had been instrumental in teaching me a lot about marketing and sales and building businesses. Turns out he's an energy healing master. Um, and he started teaching others how to do it. And I thought, wow, this is, sounds really good. I don't know if I actually believe this. It sounds way out there. <laughs> I don't know. But I thought, you know what? He, he's a, I, I really respect him. I trust him. He's a really, really great at what he does this is what he's doing. I'm going to take a look at it. So I did. And um, some of the things I still are unbelievable, but, but it, it works, you know? So I'm just blown away every day by the stuff I, I see that I'm able to do for others. And that, you know, I see other people doing, it, it's just quite amazing. I'm really blessed and lucky. That is such an amazing career trajectory and how you have pieced it together, Jason. I'm smiling because I was born and raised in the East. And we believe that we are not a body, we are a soul, and the soul is the embodiment of energy. So my culture doesn't even have a last name because the body belongs to the parents, the soul belongs to no man or woman, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. we grew up in understanding that energy. We look at the divine as the combination of masculine and feminine energy, which is the same divine that is our soul, which is inside of us. So as you're talking about healing and energy, that totally resonates for me, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not surprised that once you understood it, it made total sense because the Western way of thinking is not that until you get introduced to it. But my curiosity question is as a business coach, you're working with people who have KPIs and monetary goals and very transactional driven outcome people, mm -hmm. but you're trying to also transform them by somehow introducing them to the inner divine yes. that is contained within them. And right. so that's a very introspective journey. It's not very easy for people. It's the most cathartic and the most scary. How are you able to combine the two and in the process, what have you learned about yourself? Yeah, um, <clears throat> well, I've learned a ton about myself. Um, combining the two, it's been interesting. Some people, if I bring it up, are very reticent. Um, I've had clients in the past who said, "I'm no, I, I'm not going to do that. I'm not. And I've had some say that's satanic stuff. I'm not messing with it. You know, I've heard other people say, well, it's a, it goes against my religion, even if they didn't put a label to it. Other people are like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but it sounds interesting. You know, let's go. Um, and some people are, are already very familiar with it and, you know, very interested. 
but you know, like what you were talking before about um, the connection and how energy can pull you towards certain things and, you know, just guide you. It's been very interesting over. So let's see about a year ago, I put up a new website, I redesigned my website. Um, and, and on there on the front page, it does mention that I'm an energy healing master. But before that, it was not something that I talked about very often. And if you looked at my website, it really wasn't you know present very much. And I would get clients from time to time who were healing masters themselves, uh, probably slightly different modalities and you know different ways of doing things. Uh, but they just found me on Google and you know read through my website and they're like, oh yeah, it sounds like a good business coach. You know, I um, like one of my clients, uh, an old client has uh, an alternative medicine practice, and she was actually a licensed massage therapist who also was trained in the Eastern healing arts and then expanded the practice to do energy work, you know, and bring in more people like that. And when we got on the phone originally, we were talking and um, she said all this and I said, Oh, and I said, well, you know, I'm an energy healing master myself. She's like, no, I didn't know that. I was like, Oh yeah, it's, you know, it's on my website a little bit. She's like, I, I did not see that, but that's amazing. And now I'm not surprised that we're here together talking. And I've heard that, you know, quite a few times from people over the years. So I think it, you know, it is something that can pull you, especially if you're open to it. Um, but, you know, going back to what you're asking, how to mix it and how to like bring it up. I don't look at it. It is spiritual. It is divine. That said, we don't have to look at it that way. In my opinion, it's, it's just love. It's connection with your authentic self. It's connection with source, whatever you believe that source to be. It's, you know, I believe there is an energy field that connects everybody on the planet. And that's also a love field. And so you also asked how I've changed. I never would have used these words, you know, 12 years ago. I kind of had the concepts a little bit in my head and in my belief system, but I wasn't that aware, you know, and I was very left brain, very analytical. Um, especially growing up and not that emotional. I actually went through um, a lot of childhood, not a lot, but some childhood trauma stuff, uh, you know, with different people who are close to me where I learned to put up walls, barriers, emotional blocks to, to keep so that I didn't um, take on too much emotion, didn't get too happy when things were going well and didn't get too sad or angry when things weren't going well. And I, I, that was a learned behavior. And I actually remember I made a conscious choice and I actually wrote something and it's on my blog uh, about this uh, last year. Um, because even though I got certified in this stuff 11 years ago, I'm continuously learning and, and having new awarenesses and new ahas. Um, I had, I was in a group just this, this morning, a peer group of other energy healers, and we were doing work on ourselves together and I had an aha about, and, you know, this kind of goes to one of the main topics of the show, which is um, a lot of my clients and myself in, in, in the past. And it's still, you know, these, even though we've worked through a lot of things, things still pop up for us. What would it be like, or what does it feel like, or what subconscious blocks do we have on our roles in relationship, our gender roles? And so like, you know, who makes more money in the relationship? Who's the main provider? And what if that changes? How does that affect us on a subconscious level? And a lot of times it's stuff that uh, we just push away. We try not to deal with. We don't even allow it to come to consciousness because we're, we're repressing it so much. And when it does, we just, you know, we're, we're told to like um, persevere, grin and bear it, uh, be strong, be confident, keep your chin up. All these things that we're told throughout our lives, especially men, uh, you know, just to, you know, keep, keep going and not pay attention to that stuff. But if you don't, yes, you can get through those moments, but they build and it's cumulative and the stress and the internal struggle just keeps building. So what I've learned to myself, yeah, is how to connect it to how, how to feel love for myself, how to feel love for others, even if I don't agree with them, even if they've wronged me, um, 
you know, and, and to realize I probably wrote wrong them, even if I don't realize or haven't, you know, noticed it. So to also ask, well, what was my role in this or what is my role and, and what's my responsibility to figure out and heal for myself so that I can be better moving forward. I can be a better partner, a better family member, you know, a better coach for my clients, a better um, leader and example for my community. And just that we all just keep learning, yeah. keep growing, keep loving. Thank you, Jason. That is wow. That is so powerful. And, you know, I can listen to you, you know, for hours. And what I really yeah, admire, I can talk for hours, but I'll try not to. <laughs> you know, what I really admire is the combination of business coaching and energy, because now you're combining the business owners, executive, right? CFOs out there. Um, from what I have seen, no one really teaches us about self love, mm -hmm. about love, right? We perform at high level, high performance, right? We have, you know, shareholders that we have to meet our goals, meet certain quotas, and so on, that we have so much stress, so much, you know, overwhelm on all of us, right? Because we got to perform. But, you know, what, what I come across is when you really sit down with, you know, certain individuals, and you talk about, hey, their inner child, right? About, hey, looking in the mirror and saying, hey, I love you. I appreciate you. Yeah. Like many people cannot really look in the mirror and say, wow, I love you. I appreciate you because, hey, because they always look at either at themselves, their relationship or outside world where, hey, this is not really me. They don't even know who they truly are. Right. Yeah. So how, you know, how can you, you know, with the executives, right, with, with, with the clients that you're working with, how do you break down the walls, the barriers to show them that, hey, who you really are, right? How you should love yourself, how you should appreciate yourself, how you should self-care about yourself. Yeah. So... It really starts, I mean, it, just going through that is the coaching process, <clears throat> you know, helping people and say, well, what is it that you want? You know, what do you really want here? Because you can't keep going the way you're going. You're, you know, you're already burning yourself out. You already don't have the energy, the focus um, that you need. You're already overwhelmed, overburdened, overworked, and you're not where you want to be. So something needs to change, <laughs> you know, what's it going to be? Um, and just helping them realize that, you know, it, it, for instance, when I'm working with clients, yes, we're working on business things, working on business strategy, networking, sales, how do you grow that employee development. But in the end, a lot of us already know the things we should be doing. It's not so much when I'm working with clients, it's not so much about imparting knowledge to them, Although that is part of it, of course, you know, I say, well, I've, you know, do this, do that. Um, but a lot of it is just helping them to get out of their own way so they can implement, you know, and execute that stuff that they already know or the little bit of, that I'm giving them. Because if they're not, you know, they don't have the mental space, they don't have the energy, they don't have the time because they're so busy taking care of other people and their family. And you know, I, I said to a client yesterday, now hold on, I said, hold on, let's think about this. You know what you're doing. She was working on. Um, she she was just really strapped for time. She came into the session and said, and this is a realtor. She said, I don't have enough time to do everything. There's way too much that I need done in my business. And I said, well, you know, what's one of the focuses that you can help to get more time? She said, if somebody, if other people could could do stuff, you know, if other people can pitch in and do their fair share. I said, well, okay, so that's interesting. What, like who? And she came up with her family members, right? Like, well, if they could help out a lot more, if they could be more responsible for themselves, especially kids, you know, if they could um, know what they need and not come to me every second of, you know, every day for this and that. And we're talking about older kids, not, you know, yeah, a five-year-old might need a little bit more than, you know, say a, a, an older teenager. Um and we took a look and I said, well, all right, so tell me how you're supporting them now. And they, she told me and I said, OK, let's just think about this. If you continue down this process, what's this going to be like when this person is 39 years old? 
are you still going to be supporting them the same way? Because I thought they were a little bit older than, you know, what she was doing. And, and I understand it's, you know, the mama, the mama bear really mm -hmm. wants to take care of her kids. That's, you know, of course. Um, but at some point, and so we, we talked through this, she was like, yeah, I see what you're saying. And then I always end my coaching sessions by asking the client, all right, so based on everything we talked about, what are your action steps for the coming week? What are you committing to you know, that you're going to be able to do? And first thing she said is, I'm cutting the umbilical cord. <laughs> I was like, okay, great. Because I said, do you realize how much time and energy this would free up if you're able to you know, get your kid to just support themselves a little bit more and age appropriately you know, at this point? Uh, where you didn't have to do all that. She was like, yeah, she said, it's hard. I'm like, I, I know, I know it's hard. Absolutely. That's, you know, that's the parent thing in us. That's really hard. And is that something you think you should do and can do? She said, yes. It's like, all right. So a lot of times, you know, helping the people through the business stuff, a lot of times it's not business stuff that gets in the way. It's our personal relationships. It's how we set up our life. It's self-care, like we mentioned before. Um, taking the time out to exercise, to do the things that you need to do um, and not beating ourselves up for not being there for our family hundred percent, you know, 200 percent of the time and doing taking personal time. And, you know, that's not selfish. That's necessary. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah, there's you know, it's not just business stuff, but. It's really working with the, the whole person, their whole life to see what needs to be fixed so that your business can go forward so that you can have the rest of it. It's, it's very cyclical, you know? <laughs> and that is so brilliant the way you tied it together, Jason, because the same person has a business presence and family presence and you can't separate the two, right? You don't bifurcate right. a life for the two different arenas you show up in. Yeah. And so as I'm hearing you speak, what's coming up for me is, do you see a difference between what mothers struggle with and what fathers struggle with? Because sometimes mothers are too hard on themselves, believing that they have to do everything. And what they don't realize is by not allowing the kids to figure it out, it's like riding a bicycle. If you don't allow the child to fall down, they're never going to learn to ride a bicycle. And falling down is not a bad thing. It's a necessary part of growth. It builds resiliency, right? So what tips would you have? Say two tips you have for mothers and two tips for fathers based on mm. how they approach this differently. Yeah. <clears throat> so 100% agree with what you said. And it was funny because during that coaching session yesterday, I actually said that about you have to let them fall in order to learn, um, you know, without that falling, they don't learn. So yes, what both genders want is the same thing. And, and what they're afraid of is the same thing that they're not going to be there enough for their children. They're, you know, not going to, their children won't feel all the love that they have because they're not there enough. They're not present enough. And interestingly, um, what I've found over the years is, and I, a lot of people know this, the, the man typically has the financial support role, and, but the woman, the wife, the mom, um, really runs the household, is really the CEO of the house. And that's just... You know, pardon my language, it's just a shit ton of work. It's <laughs> it's too much to, to have a full-time, you know, running a business, running your family, running the household is insane. And then, you know, on the, the father's side, trying to put in enough hours and a lot of times after work hours to support and bring in the paycheck and then feel bad that they're not with the kids enough is really tough and draining too. So both people, and I think that's also just one thing, honestly, about our American culture is we've really, you know, we used to have um, a nine to five work mentality, right? And a lot of times, I mean, even in the, you know, 50s, 60s, whenever it was, just one, you know, usually the man did the work 
you only needed one income to support a family. And that was just a nine to five income. And now you need two and it's like, you know, not quite 24 seven, but we can work remote. We have our, you know, phones, our devices that are telling us, Hey, you know, boss has this question and I need to do this. And both genders are just working a ton. I think everybody's overworked, which is why I love doing what I do because I help people to be able to shrink their work time, focus on the most important things. You know, the less they do, the more efficient they get and their business grows and they have this better work-life balance, more time with their family, more. So, all right, I'm sorry. So your two tips, <laughs> um, I'd say, let's see, I'm trying to decide if this is actually gender specific or not for men. For, well, for both it's, you know, First thing is take inventory of what's really important in life. And second, figure out a way to then make it happen. So you're focusing on those things that are really important, you know, and there's a way to do it. There's a, there's a solution to every puzzle. There's a way to make it happen. Um, like when I'm working, again, when I'm working with clients who are business owners, I tell them, you know, you can make your business any way that you want it. You can do anything in it. You don't have to be the top uh, lead generator, rainmaker. You don't have to be uh, the best person who provides the service, whatever it is. You can do anything you want. There are no rules. You just, you make your role based on what you absolutely love, what your passion is, because that's where you are your best. That's where you're showing up to the world as who you are, you know, and what you provide. And then you figure out the pieces around it how it all is going to fit together to then make, you know, the business do what it's supposed to do, what the mission is, what it's deliverable is. So I think those, those are most two tips is fi figure out what you want your life to look like. And then secondly, um, figure out how to make it happen. And I think the best ways to do that are it, some people know that they can go like go journal, they can do a vision board, uh, you know, they can figure out how to do it. And a lot of people don't and, and connect with somebody, you know, whether it's a mentor, if it's somebody who's already done what you've done, if it's a coach, you know, whatever, a spiritual leader, just connect with somebody who can help you and, and help you get clear and, and help you, you know, see the force through the trees, really, because we're all blinded. We all have blind spots and it's so hard. Uh, I mean, I can tell you as a coach, it's it's so hard to coach myself. <laughs> I've tried lots of times. Sometimes I can, um, but most of the time I can't. It's really hard. So get support from somebody. Thank you. Thank you, Jason, uh, for such a, for sharing your story, uh, for such a valuable insight uh, about you, about what you do, how you help your clients, uh, because the world needs you, right? Our society, our communities, you know, business owners out there that are actually standing in their own way uh, really do need coaches like yourself uh, to help them, you know, overcome the barriers, the fears uh, that are on their paths, right? And as, as parents, as, you know, moms and dads that are out there, you don't have to do it all by yourself. You don't, right? But we create this uh, perspective, that we do, right? Because of how we were raised, because of our cultures, of our beliefs and all those different things. Well said, That's... Coach Martin. Imagine we have run out of 30 minutes that quick, but I do want to squeeze in a one minute here, Jason, for you to let us know how the audience can get a hold of you and one nugget of wisdom. Thanks. I appreciate that. This has been tremendously fun and uh, I really enjoyed it. And, and both of you have such great insight as well. And I, I just love it and love being in this company. So thank you so much um, to get in touch with me. Let's see if I do this right. Yep. <laughs> uh, distinctivecoaching.com is my website. You can certainly get in touch with me there. That's easy enough. Uh, there's links to social media. Um, feel free to reach out, you know, contact me through my website. You can, you can actually book a 30 minute, hundred percent complimentary, uh, business strategy session just to help you ferret out some of the stuff we talked about today or whatever other challenges you might have. One nugget I'd say is no matter what you're doing, no matter where you're struggling, feel into the love. Mm -hmm. Just take a moment for yourself. Yeah. Close your eyes. 
Breathe in and just feel love around you. Feel into it. If there's some distressing person situation, send it love. Thank you so much, Jason, because ultimately we are each a source of energy and we are all an embodiment of love. And when we heal ourselves with love, we give ourselves grace. And from that place of grace, we're able to give others our love and our grace. 